everyone, and welcome back to the Nightmare's Edge. Today I have a special story written by the wonderfully gifted Paige Turner. If you're unsure of who she is, her information will be listed in the description. Be sure to check it out and follow her on Twitter. The story today is an exclusive to my channel, and it is a blast. It's entitled, Coming Soon. Now, sit back, relax, and let me tickle those inner fears. Hello? Um, <clears throat> hey Nightcrawlers, if I can still call you that. So listen, it's January 11th, 2022, and I know it's been a while since you've heard from me. I'm honestly surprised any of you are still here, but if you'll let me, I'd like a chance to explain. Those kind enough to be here may suspect the reason but it goes far beyond what you might imagine. This was a life-changing experience for our family and not for the better. That being said, I truly want you to understand because we finally feel ready to get our old lives back. For me, that's making things right here. I transcribed the old live streams and added events which later transpired. No details are exaggerated. This is not for entertainment. I merely wish to explain my absence and apologize for any resulting inconvenience. So here we go. Hey guys, it's 7.30 in Michigan and I hope you're doing well this evening. I'm glad many of you could be here. I know you were hoping for a new story, but I had an unexpected job interview. There's still a few hours of edits to finish Horror Heyday, then it's all yours, for sure this time. Unfortunately. If I want to continue narrating the internet's most frightening tales, I need to handle these annoying bills. They're surprisingly vital to producing a quality product for your listening pleasure. Needless to say, if there comes a time when this channel is self-sufficient, the frequency of uploads will increase exponentially. Since I couldn't deliver the promised goods, I thought we might try Q&A. For the next hour, I will answer any questions you might have. Most creators couldn't say stuff like that, not without inviting a slew of insanely perverted queries, but that's where we differ. I've never thought of you guys as fans, it's more like hanging out with friends. I admit, in the beginning I was a little terrified of you, but now we have this chill atmosphere that surpassed my highest expectations. Honestly, my appreciation is boundless. Okay, that's probably enough of the gushy stuff. Just know, you'll never be taken for granted. Not by me, at least. Now, who has a question? Ah, Lady Nopingham wants to know how old I am. Well, Lady, as you can probably tell by my skinless skull, fully matured horns, and my melty red eyes, I've been around a hot minute. Best guess, between 950 and 990. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Nah, I'm 43. It's probably a good idea to get the basics out of the way. So I have a wife, Amber, and two sons. Aiden is 14 and Connor is 10. Oh, and Eddie, our sweet, gently gigantic pit bull is three. And yes, he is a very good boy. We rescued him after moving to the country and he instantly became part of the family. When granddad died, we inherited the house. And although we miss him terribly, I'm relieved the boys won't grow up in a tiny apartment. People always ask if it's haunted. It has that old spooky vibe, but it's definitely not. Pops built this place when he got married, and in all the time since, not one strange thing has happened. Even if there were a ghost, it wouldn't matter. Regardless what proof I had, it would look like a cheap publicity stunt. Seriously though, it's a great spot. Not only do we have 20 acres situated between a beautiful lush forest, there's also a giant pond in our front yard. Well, I think that qualifies as the basics. Who has another question? Ooh, Captain Lore wants to know what my recording space looks like. <laughs> well, funny you should ask, because it is a tribute to starving artists everywhere. Currently, my studio is a blanket fort inside a closet. Haha, <laughs> thanks Disco Dan. The fact that you can't tell is a huge relief. What's next? Okay, Susie Q, I think I can answer that. Actually, several things inspired me to start narrating. 
but the main factor is my family. I've always received compliments about my voice, but I never considered doing anything with it until Aiden and Connor became obsessed with creepypastas. One day they played Ted the Carver on the living room TV. My wife and I enjoyed it so much, we found ourselves looking for more. After a few days of seeing what YouTube had to offer, Amber suggested I try it for myself. If nothing else, it sounded like fun. And as you guys know, the rest is history. Oh man, I don't know if I should answer that fun dude. There's multiple authors here and I don't think I could choose a favorite anyway. I had a hard time picking which stories to start with because I like them all equally. Sure Paige, if you have something you'd like me to read, email it to nightmaresedgebyyp at yahoo.com. I'm happy to consider all submissions. Alright, who yearns for more? Lily Livers, you're too kind, but no, I don't edit my pitch. Thank goodness, because I'm still learning the finer, technical aspects. Damn, I bet the next question is... Yup, Kitty Cat is the winner. The answer to what the hell was that is I have no idea. But Amber is calling, so it's probably safe to guess the boys broke something. Thanks again for coming. I'll see you at the premiere. Hey, hey, Nightcrawlers. Get it? Like, I'm Nightmare's Edge, and you have to crawl because you're on the edge? What do you think? There's almost 50 people here now. I think that qualifies as our own community nickname. Hey, Livers, Tank, Lady, Lord, Disco, and everyone else. Holy crap, so many of you here now. I can't keep up. This is a good problem to have. Very good. Seriously, though. How is everyone doing? That's great to hear. So how was Horror Hey Day? Judging by these comments, it sounds like you guys enjoyed it. As most of you know, our last chat ended with a loud crash. The boys were throwing Eddie's frisbee around and of course the damn thing ended up on top of the garage. I know what you're thinking. And it pleases me to report, my kids were raised with enough sense to stay off the roof. Unfortunately, Eddie wasn't. Yes, as in the pit bull. He climbed on the AC platform and somehow made the jump to the tool shed. But the overhang foiled his final leap. Poor guy bounced all the way to the ground. Amber had to take him inside while I retrieved his love disc. Haha, <laughs> oh my. That lady makes me blush. I'm sorry, I did not mean to make that sound sexual. Whew, now that I can breathe again... I thought you guys might get a kick out of the antidote, and fine, maybe I was fishing for story reactions, but I saved the best for last. I got the job. Soon, I'll be able to upgrade my equipment and really get things kicked off around here. Thanks guys, I appreciate the encouragement. I'm nervous and excited, but it's going to be great. I mostly work from home during the holidays, but after New Year's, my schedule will be hectic while I get the hang of things. Wow, it's getting so... Uh, no. Sorry, Paige. I haven't had time. But I'll be reading submissions later this week. As much as I would love to narrate everything you guys send, there's more than I can keep up with. Don't worry, though. Not using it on the channel doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I have more talented friends than I can keep up with. Alright, guys. I got hungry mouths to feed and a wife with only two hands. Take care. Sup, Nightcrawlers. As you know, it's that time of year. I have a special holiday pasta for Christmas, but this will be my last live stream until the day after. Don't worry Q, I won't be far. Plus you guys can still catch me on Twitter and TikTok. I'm sorry Paige, I honestly haven't read anyone's submissions. This time of year is always crazy for us, with the kids being out of school and everything. Yes lady, thanks for the reminder. Some of you expressed wishes to send a gift. Our P.O. box is listed below, but listen, I seriously don't want you going through extra trouble. Your support is already the best gift. Haha, <laughs> easy disco. No need for sap police. I'm simply trying to ensure no one feels pressured, that's all. Now I know you have your own families to give back to, so I'll catch you crawlers later. Holy shit, Nightcrawlers, I almost couldn't wait. But worried a Christmas summons might be frowned upon, so I suffered through it. A lot of you guys gave donations, and it means the world to us. 
we're also overjoyed with your amazing gifts, and I would love to share those with everyone. Lady, seriously, thank you. I'm wearing the Nukes Top 5 shirt. Did you see it? This is badass. I am in love. Disco, you are a true artist. Crawlers, look at what this guy drew. I've never looked so dapper. Now, the one that really blew my mind? Paige, I'm telling myself you're super rich, so I don't feel bad about this drone. Because I really love it. In fact, I have a special surprise. Tomorrow, I'm going to premiere a Forest Cryptid story with a special video taken by my new toy. I flew this baby all over the property, and the footage came out great. Oh gosh, no I have it, Paige, I'm sorry. Tell you what, I'll read your story tomorrow and shoot you an email as soon as I'm finished. See you tomorrow, crawlers. You make a creature's heart want to beat. I am so sorry I bailed on you yesterday. We had an intruder, and everything has been hectic. The police were worthless. They didn't do a goddamn thing. Well, I didn't mean to shout. I'm just so worked up right now. Everything was going too well. I should have known this was coming. I know you're sick of hearing it, but I really do appreciate the shit out of you. Thanks for your concern. I know it's silly to worry at a time like that, but I did panic at the thought of you all wondering where the fuck Edge went. <laughs> no, seriously though, we're fine. Physically. Amber is a little shaken, Aiden is acting tough, and Connor is a big mama's boy. And Eddie? Well, he was pissed, but not anymore. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Let me start over, because this is a weird-ass story. After the stream, I did final edits on the drone footage, checked the door, peeked in on the kids, and went to bed. It's the same routine every night. I can't sleep without knowing it's done. Ugh. I shouldn't have made that stupid joke about a fake haunting. The shit sounds just as bad. I know you guys believe me, but can we keep this a secret? Because I'm too stressed out to deal with trolls. Man, a slumdog cryptid like myself doesn't deserve you. I swear, I'm tempted to pay a writer to put this mindfuck into fancy words, but we'll make do. So picture it. Our humble, slightly creepy home in the middle of nowhere and a family of five soundly asleep. The master bedroom is downstairs, and the boys' rooms are upstairs. Since they keep their doors closed, Eddie usually sleeps with us. At 3.18, I woke up to a cold, wet face nudge and heard faint footsteps above us. I would have slept right through it if not for a good boy, but one of the kids going into my office puzzled me. It's not like a movie where Dad's secret room is off limits. There's no locked drawers, nothing. Even more strange was how they seemed to be pacing end to end, like they were searching for something. Then, there was a loud thud, like something hit the floor, and I lost track of the person as their steps retreated. Eddie showed his displeasure with some out-of-character growling that made me nervous. That's when we got up to scold whichever genius decided they couldn't wait for whatever they were doing, but upstairs. I almost bumped into Connor as he left the bathroom. I told him, Get your ass back to bed. You know better. He wore the most pitifully confused face, and I didn't even wait for a response. Even Ed was ashamed of my behavior. He rudely bumped my leg as he followed Con to bed. Amber barely grunted when I told her, didn't remember anything by morning. When Eddie followed the boys downstairs for breakfast, I remember thinking he was particularly underfoot, but I had bigger concerns. I asked them outright. What's so important it couldn't wait for daylight? I know kids lie but I also know what it looks like when they're genuinely confused. They had no clue what I was talking about. To be sure, I made a joke of it, you know. We aren't mad, it's actually funny in the light of day, kind of stuff. Nothing. I'm sorry, I love my sons, but the little bastards are terrible actors. Hell, I was almost ready to entertain the haunted notion, so I took a look around. The front door has three locks, and no one is getting the noisy garage open without waking the whole house. Windows were possible to reach, but impossible to open. When nothing was amiss in the office, I went outside. After walking a few pointless circles, I decided to check the mail and call it quits. On the way back, I leaned against a tree to tie my shoe and almost shit myself. Amber and I quit smoking before we moved here, yet there was a cluster of cigarette butts on the ground, as if someone stood there for a few hours. 
I took pictures to show Amber without scaring the kids, but she thought I was overreacting. That pushed me into a deeper investigation mode. Those butts weren't covered in dirt with faded filters. No, these were from this week. I must have played that previous night in my head a hundred times before it finally clicked. The attic access is in the office. It had one of those trap doors in the ceiling, making a nice loud thud when opened. Do you have any idea how many stories I've read of where a hobo is living in someone's crawl space? Shit, I can't describe the instant coldness that spread through me. It was bone deep dread. The cigarette scared me, but when Amber didn't care, I don't know. I thought maybe she snuck them behind my back. There's a certain level of unrealness to the idea of a stranger roaming about as we slept. Now, remember, this is just the next morning. It was broad daylight. I put the family in the car, took my pistol out of the safe, and gathered my courage under the attic door. With shaking hands, I pulled the rope and watched the small black abyss open wider and wider. The rickety stairs fell to the floor with the same hard thud as before, and my stomach dropped to a new low. Carefully ascending the unsteady ladder, I listened for any noise to indicate another presence. My knees threatened to buckle with each step, but there's no words for the moment you actually see a nightmare brought to life. Thankfully, there isn't much clutter up there. It was easy to take in the full room with a few turns. I called the police, and they stayed on the phone as I made my way back to the garage. They didn't hang up until we were safely parked at the end of our long driveway, waiting for their arrival. Twenty minutes later, two cruisers joined us. The first stayed with my family, and I rode with the second. After a full search, I escorted the police to the nest and explained, Yes, the attic is for decorations, and we removed the Christmas ornaments weeks ago. I did my best to stay calm. I know they were only doing their job, but I think I'd remember seeing blankets and pillow laid in the middle of our family albums. For the love of... Sorry, I know. I've kept you too long, and I'm getting riled up again. But there's no way one of the boys pulled all that shit out. No one has touched those damn photo albums since 2011 when we went digital. The cops think that someone squatted here for a few days before moving on, but I don't think I'll ever sleep again. How many nights was some deranged person sharing our house? So yeah, that's why there was no video yesterday. I cleaned the attic and stored the Christmas decorations while Amber went to town for cameras and a padlock. We now have motion-activated surveillance and a secure attic door that won't open again until October. Oh, and one last thing before we go. I want to let you know we appreciated how Eddie stepped up to protect the boys. Even after we got into the car, he stayed right between them. Needless to say, he received a handsome dinner and buried his new bone proudly. I'm not joking. He absolutely has his new swagger in his step. He knows he did good boy. Alright, until next time, crawlers. Sup, night crawlers? What'd you think? Was it worth the wait? I was hoping Paige would be here to see the special dedication for the footage, but she's probably at work or something. Hey Paige, when you watch this, thanks again for the amazing drone. I promise you guys are going to see a lot more use from it. Oh, and her story was great. I hope I have time to do it in the future, but I've got something special planned for the next two weeks. Stay tuned for a special teaser after the stream. Haha. <laughs> Oh no lady, please don't say our house looks like Amityville. We've had enough real life horror to last a lifetime. Thank you very much. That's right, Disco. You tell her. We're too old for that shit. No, seriously guys, please, never send me hobo in the attic stories ever again. Okay? Exactly, Livers. That's our fucking creed now. Hell no, fuck hobos. <laughs> this is why you guys are the best. Anyway, see, uh, hear you. Uh, screw it. Later. Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm skipping the pleasantries tonight. I'm seriously freaking out here. The last few days have been straight from a cliche horror movie. I start going to the office tomorrow, so if I don't get this out now, who knows when my next chance will be. I don't even believe this shit anymore. Tell me what you make of it. I also need to make a disclaimer up front. I know this is a horror channel, but tonight we aren't talking about some fictional story for a fun scare. This is real. My friend is dead. The only reason I'm sharing is because I truly 
feel like we've all become close friends, and I could honestly use the extra support. That being said, I understand if you don't want to stay for this. Thanks, crawlers. And since we still haven't seen Paige, I'm adding another thank you for the drone, as it's now part of our security force. When I feel extra paranoid, I fly it over the forest to reassure myself our house guests didn't take up residence next door. Do you remember my nightly routine of checking on the kids and locks? Well, you can add obsessively viewing the monitors to that list. A caveman-like instincts have gone into overdrive and my family's protection consumes every waking hour. We have six cameras outside and four inside. The package came with ten and someone wouldn't let me buy an extra for the attic. Technically, with the padlock I could see her point, but opinions may yet be swayed. Thursday, as always, I was last to bed and first to rise. Well, second if you count a certain hyperactive pup. I scanned through the previous night's footage from my tablet while making coffee and felt satisfied with the results. After Amber woke, I took Eddie to check the mail as an excuse to poke around outside. The cigarette butts were long gone, and thus far no more have appeared, but I did find a manila envelope in our mailbox. There was no postage, meaning someone delivered it in person. I mean, maybe if we were in a neighborhood, but driving all this way? And you know what it is? A scary story. <laughs> I assuredly shit you not. There are no shits here. To be more specific, it's about a psychopath who becomes obsessed with a YouTube narrator, crosses the country to kill his family. At least that's what the cover said. I couldn't read past the second page. It was disgusting. Someone tried to scare me with over-the-top details involving way too many entrails, but I threw that crap away. I'm fairly certain the actual hobo didn't go through the whole trouble. I only mention it to show you guys the extent of crazy we're dealing with. We think the story was a poor attempt at humor by one of our less than supportive friends. A few days ago we attended a dinner party and Amber accidentally mentioned my little hobby while discussing the attic incident. Yeah, it's too coincidental. Don't worry, we're completely safe to talk. The channel wasn't mentioned and they won't find anything by searching my real name. No kidding lady, there were so many times it felt like I was being overly cautious, but now I'm grateful. Not to mention, this has become my safe place. I'd lose my mind worrying about lurkers in every stream. I still want to know who did it so I can express my gratitude, but they haven't returned. When the kids were finished with breakfast, we had a family outing. It gave me a chance to stop for a game cam. If we received another present, I'll have pictures to go with it. Other than that, we had a nice day, and I performed my nightly checks without issue. This time, it was 2.26, so technically Friday, but whatever. When I woke up to the heavy weight of Eddie's paws crushing my boys, you know, my special boys, he leapt from the bed, barking furiously. It's amazing how excruciating pain and fear gets the blood flowing. I shot out of bed like, well, like a fully grown pit bull used my sack as a launch pad. The only moment spared was to retrieve the gun, but seconds felt like minutes as I listened for any change in Eddie's low, warning growls. Feeling braver with the weapon, I joined our furry protector outside the closed office. Two curious boys watched from their doors, but smartly retreated at my serious dad face. So many thoughts raced through my mind as I steeled myself for entry. Chief among them, how did they get this far before alerting Ed? With a final glance back, I took a deep breath and burst through the door. Unsatisfied with my quick scans of the dark room, I managed to toggle the light switch on with my shoulder. My eyes tried hard to squeeze shut against the blinding brightness, but I held them open via sheer desperation. Eddie sniffed in loud huffs as he investigated and eventually came to lie under the window. His demeanor indicated a loss of trail, but I was too distracted by a shiny, metallic object to care. In the center of the floor, under the attic access, lay the open padlock. I was consumed by rage so black, all fear evaporated in its wake. I pulled the door open in one overpowered yank and leapt aside to avoid the falling steps. Eddie's unimpressed yawn barely registered as I tried to climb the steep steps, gun held high. It was empty and undisturbed. If anyone went up there, you wouldn't know by the looks of it. I still walked around before feeling satisfied enough to leave, but there was nowhere to hide. I made sure of that when reorganizing. Ed was still laying near the far wall and didn't come when called. I walked over to talk playful smack, but my eyes habitually sought out the window's lock, 
As usual, it was safely flicked closed. I'm not sure what made me put it to the test, but I pushed gently on the glass. My stomach rolled as the window raised smoothly and quietly. The lock was broken on the end, so while it appeared secure, it was actually a psycho's private entrance. There was no camera pointed at it, maybe if we bought the extra one. But there isn't much on this side of the house. I considered entry there impossible, yet considering the evidence. Still, it had to be someone fairly lightweight. There's no trees close enough to use, just flimsy lattice work, which is now gone. We called the police, who again work useless. Technically, I had no proof of a crime, only a suspicion of trespassing. Nothing was missing, and the padlock was open, not broken. All I know on that front is, they didn't use the keys. It came with two, and both remained locked inside the gun safe. I was losing my mind. I knew someone was messing with us. I called our neighbors. Our kids are close in age, and we became good friends with the porters. I told Rick and Maggie everything, and they immediately wanted to help. We convinced the boys to have a sleepover with their friends while Rick stayed with us. I also wanted Amber to stay at the porters, but she refused. Rick was a big game hunter, and I think it made her nervous to see how much firepower he brought to the show. I expected him to sleep on the couch, but he insisted on staying awake in his camper truck. He wanted to surprise any would-be intruders. It felt like we were being cautious. In addition to removing the lattice, we added a camera and spotlights. We sat together for an hour before I went to bed, leaving my tablet so we could watch the monitors. I was nervous at first, but the sight of a 250 pound man loading a shotgun has a way of soothing the soul, you know, when he's on your side. 50 times I told him, don't walk out of the lights, stay where the cameras can see you. He didn't call or text, he just ran out there alone. Shit, I didn't even want him to leave his truck. We should have called the police and kept our distance. I knew we were dealing with a madman. On the security footage at 1.49, you see Rick proceed to the back of the house, shotgun in hand. After police enhanced the audio, we could hear a soft rustling that drew his attention. I woke to Eddie losing his shit and turning circles all over the bed. Already dressed, I ran to the monitors to see my friend sneaking into the tree line. I hurried downstairs, ignoring Amber's questions, yelling to call the police. Tragedy loomed in the air leaving a foul taste in my mouth. I locked my wife and dog inside and headed toward the forest. Every leaf crunch broke the silence like a neon sign revealing my position, and each heartbeat throbbed painfully as I searched for Rick in the dark, quiet woods. Finally, the sound of a single gunshot rang out, and despite the overwhelming instinct to run away, I charged forward. I found my friend on the cold, hard ground, choking on his own blood as he struggled for each breath. He couldn't say much, and what he did say were last words for his family, and therefore private. As I sat there crying, cradling his corpse, I jumped at every noise, expecting one final shot to take me. I can still feel his sticky blood between my fingers and matted hair. When you watch a movie, you never think about how uncomfortable those little things are. Detectives finally took our previous claim seriously now that they had a murder, and they requested we make enemy list. Even the boys. I doubt anything comes of it. They stuck around for a few days to keep me quiet, but we've been on our own ever since. We try to wear a good face for the boys, but we aren't sleeping much. I'm not sure when I'll be able to post again, but I'll do my best to keep you updated. So is everybody still with me? Obviously I failed miserably with the updates, but I'm sure all doubts as to why have been erased. Clearly, the psycho was not on the run. Funny enough, it wasn't even a he. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Six weeks after the stream, I felt ready to record again. But first, I needed a few things from Walmart. Thankfully, Amber and the boy stayed home since it was supposed to be a quick trip. I was in line to check out when a small, thin woman with dark hair approached, claiming I looked familiar. I tried politely explaining she was mistaken but my words didn't get through. I'm fairly certain she was high as fuck. The chick kept talking about my handsome bone structure. It got to the point I told her, look, I'm flattered you're so keen with me, but I'm old and married. Can't you find some jerky yet mysterious emo kid or something? I bet you could fix him. Fuck, if looks could kill. The flirty girl act disappeared and we entered gone girl territory. Her eyes darted around like they were vibrating and her fists clenched and unclenched in spastic motions. I thought she was going to hit me, 
but after a solid five minutes of silent death glares, she walked away. I was shaken up because my first attempt at a normal task resulted in yet another unreal situation, but never did I expect that tiny girl was a murderer. Although now, I understand how she managed to beat Rick in a gunfight. We expected a deranged madman. The sight of a young woman undoubtedly caused the hesitation which cost his life. But I'm jumping ahead again, sorry. My excitement for recording faded and I decided to postpone. I didn't want my first video back to reflect the hot chaotic mess of my nerves. That weekend, I thought it would be a good idea to relax by taking the boys for a sort of man day. Just normal bonding stuff, playing ball and maybe pop a tent in the yard, nothing stressful. We never saw her coming. We were spread out, throwing a stupid ball around because I wanted the boys to have a real childhood memory, not just Wii Sports. But I instantly recognized her. I knew it was that bitch from Walmart. Granted, I didn't know who yet, but obviously two random crazy people didn't coincidentally find my house. She came out of the forest like a ghost. Even before she raised the gun, I became painfully aware of my position between the boys. They were spread far apart, with me in the center. My body acted as both unison and independently from my brain. No matter how desperately I wanted to protect them both, a brutal logic forced my legs into action, and without consent, rushed forward. My youngest son was already running to meet me. In the very same instant, I found myself securely between that bitch and Connor. I turned to see the gun holding Aiden in place. I never understood the ice in my veins term could be so frighteningly literal. My phone and holster were laying on the blanket 15 feet away. We were completely defenseless. I screamed, hard enough for my voice to break, begging that bitch to point the gun at me. She wouldn't listen. Fuck, she wouldn't listen. I know I don't talk much about religion, but a frightened parent can believe almost anything. I begged every deity from God to Odin to save my boys. Myself be damned. I didn't care. I know online horror stories aren't an all-purpose guide to life, but it was hard not to think about a few basic lessons learned over the years. I hoped humoring her fantasy might allow me to get closer. I asked her name, but she only tightened her grip on the gun. The sight of the barrel pointed at Aiden was traumatizing enough, but fresh vomit rose as her hand trembled, fingers still on the trigger. I was one sneeze away from watching my firstborn die. With both hands raised, palms out, I took a few cautious steps until she refocused her attention. It's impossible to accurately describe my heart pulsating uncomfortably in the back of my throat, choking off every word, but that's exactly how I felt. I didn't understand until she finally spoke. Apparently she could almost let it go when I didn't read her story, but then she got me the drone, a present which, as it turns out, was much more expensive than anything else I received. But when I still didn't read it, that confirmed I was just like the others. All the moments before now, every word I said, every decision I made, they all led to that very moment. The culmination of a million minute details equaled Connor, Aiden, and I standing in a field, held at gunpoint by Paige fucking Turner. All because I didn't read her terrible story. How could I know she actually knew me? I've never shown my face here. There's only 60 of us on the best days, and more than a few of you are in Canada. What were the odds of someone being in my city? There's narrators who have millions of listeners. Why couldn't she go crazy on one of them? Why me? There had to be dozens better suited for her tastes. I felt like I had no choice but to respond. You're absolutely right. I'm scum but please don't make them pay for my mistakes. Shoot me. I was going to read your story after Cthulhu, but you're right. I should have narrated yours first. Look, we can go inside, and I can record it with a special dedication explaining how sorry I am. My voice was so desperate, I didn't think she would buy it, but she kind of did. Her attention was solely on me, but she was considering them seriously enough to forget about Aiden. It filled me with pride to see my boys use the opportunity to quietly retreat toward the tree line. I too stole the chance to win a few more steps. All I had to do was get in reaching distance and I had her. Every overprotective dad instinct told me to rush her, 
Take her down and don't let up until she's dead. But I couldn't trust the distance remaining. Instead, I asked if she thought she could make a series out of the story. Something we could premiere weekly. And won several more feet as she laughed maniacally. That hysterical, evil laugh was the most disturbing sound I've ever heard. I now know she was in her 30s. She was... But she was so tiny. I honestly assumed she was early 20s. It's a strange thing to see so much evil in such a small package. Maybe she was possessed. As soon as she was close enough, I dropped all pretense and focused every ounce of my being into placing my body in front of that barrel. I didn't care about the stray shot that pierced my shoulder, only that I had time to take her down before I passed out. Even with the adrenaline flooding my system, the blinding inferno of agony was almost too much. I reminded myself the agony it would be to bury a son and push, and push past the numbing sensation coursing through my body. With sheer willpower, I kept hold of the gun, fighting to turn it back on her. Finally, a loud bang rang through the forest, and for a terrifying moment, I was completely unaware of who the bullet struck. I looked at the boys, breathing a heavy sigh of relief to see both on their feet. They were coming towards us, but I screamed for them to run home, knowing Amber could handle the rest. Only when they were safely away did I investigate my own condition, or that of Paige's. I pried the gun from her limp hand and crawled away when I saw the horrific wound in her midsection. Her blood spread in a huge puddle, and she was so pale I thought she was already dead. Even if she weren't, there's no way she would have been able to run off. I wanted to be with my family, damn it. It's not my fault she was gone when the police arrived. There was a manhunt over the following weeks, but her body was never found. They think wild animals finished her off, and I'm sure that's what happened, because she was on death's door. Had I not seen it for myself, things would probably feel different. But here we are, almost a year later, and we've never seen that bitch again. I know we've been here a long time, but if you'll indulge me a moment longer, I'd like to share the final police report. It didn't take long to finish the investigation once they knew who they were dealing with. Paige's real name was, get this, Paige fucking Turner. Her parents, Phoebe and Colton Turner, thought it sounded cute but she was deluded into thinking it gave her writing skills. Oh, and they're from California. She traveled all the way to Michigan just for me. I'm glad she's dead and hope she rots wherever she is now. We tried to check on Maggie and the children, but as you can imagine, they're not eager to speak with us. I would have known it was Paige before we lost Rick had my lazy ass actually read her story. If I had recognized it when she left in the mailbox, the police might have responded differently for someone obsessed enough to cross the country. I can't believe how far she went just because I didn't want to narrate a lame story. At first, I was too busy to read it, but after she gave me the drone, I felt kind of obligated. I was determined, even if it was slightly decent, it was happening. Guys, it fucking sucked. It made zero damn sense. The first few paragraphs tried to describe a woman who was being stalked, but when I didn't use it, she changed the main character to me and added the names of my family. Otherwise, it was exactly the same. Had I paid the least bit of attention, I would have seen it. The police found it quickly enough anyway. My biggest hang up was how she found me. I watched every video, listened to any hints regarding our address, and the only clue I revealed was a Michigan P.O. box which is an hour away. I don't care how long someone scoured Google Maps with the drone footage. It would take one hell of a lucky break to find us. You guys saw it. Nothing but trees in our house. There's not a highway, road sign, or a car in sight. As it turns out, that bitch was savvy enough to install some kind of GPS tracker into the drone itself. I led her right to us. Please, let my mistake be a lesson. You never truly know who's behind a username. Hell, you know the biggest mindfuck of it all? The title of the story? coming soon. I do hope you guys enjoy the story as much as I did. Paige did an amazing job. Be sure to check back next week for the second part. But until then, remember, just because you couldn't see it, doesn't mean it wasn't watching you. <laughs>